Here we're going to do some review problems to get ready for the test on 9.6 to 10.2. So here's our old friend, the average rate of change uh, for f of x equals 4x minus x squared. So we're going to take uh, first the f of x plus h is going to be 4 times x plus h minus, we're going to put x plus h squared, and then minus the quantity f of x which is 4x minus x squared, and that's going to all be over h. So I'm going to work down here. So we're going to distribute that 4 and get 4x plus 4h. We're going to square out the x plus h, which is going to be first one squared, twice the product, plus the second one squared. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative sign, making that minus 4x plus x squared, oops, I bumped that with my left hand, that's, oh, come on now, cooperate, so that's, oh, I don't know why it's doing that, okay, struggling here with the technology, give me a moment, let me see if I can do, there we go, okay, now we can distribute that uh, minus sign. So we've got, and I left off the 4h. <clears throat> okay, minus x squared, minus 2xh, minus h squared. That was a minus 4x and a plus x squared. And that's still all over h. So anything that doesn't have an h should find something to cancel. And I think we got all of that. So what remains, I'm gonna come up here now, what remains has a common factor of h. So we'll pull that out, leaving the four and the minus two x and a minus h. And that's still all over h and we know we're finished when we cancel that h in the denominator. And so our final answer is 4 minus 2x minus h. That's our average rate of change. Let's try it again with our function g. So it's got a different challenge because we have a fraction. So again, our g of x plus h is going to be 3 over, we're plugging in the x plus h where the x was, minus our g of x, which is going to look like that, all over the h. So we need common denominators. So we're going to have to multiply top and bottom on the first fraction by x plus 2 and on the second fraction by x plus h plus 2. So distributing that 3, we're going to get 3x plus 6. We're going to attach that negative sign to the 3 and distribute it, which will make it a minus 3x, minus 3h, and a minus 6. That's going to be over our common denominator, which now is going to be the x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2, and that's all still over h. Now I'm going to come up here. So we can cancel the 3x's and the 6's. So that is leaving us with, it looks like, a negative 3h. That's over the x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. Then to divide by h, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. And here's our canceling of the h that signifies we're... Did it again. I bumped it with my left hand. So let me resurrect my pen. So this now is going to be a negative 3 over the x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2, and even though it looks kind of messy, that is our answer. Okay, <clears throat> let's do a different kind of problem now. So here's our function f of x, 2x minus 7, and g of x is 4 minus x. So f minus g of x, it can also be written as f of x minus g of x, and that means we can take the 2x minus 7 minus the quantity 4 minus x. Most of the errors in this come from 
not distributing that negative sign correctly. And then we can combine the 2x and the x and the negative 7 and minus 4 to get that is our new function. And f times g of x means we're going to take f of x times g of x. So we're going to take that 2x minus 7 times 4 minus x. You can do your box if that helps. That's going to be an 8x. Uh, a minus 2x squared, a minus 28, and a plus 7x. So I'm going to write that as a negative 2x squared. The 8x and the 7x make 15x, and the minus 28. So there's our new function, f times g of x. f of x minus g of x, which is what this notation means, means we're just going to write as a fraction the f of x over the g of x, but we have to remember to state what the new domain is. Since the denominator can't be 0, then our new domain is everything except for 4, which is what would make that be undefined. So f of g of x is next, and so we're going to take f of, let me try that, Again, let's go f of, and the g of x is 4 minus x. So that means we're going to plug in the 4 minus x into the function f where we see the x. So that's going to be 8 minus 2x minus 7, or I think that's going to be 1 minus 2x. That's our f of g of x. Okay, so now we'll do some tougher ones. f of g of x means we're going to, in the f function, plug in the square root of x minus 12. So that's going to look like the square root of x minus 12 squared plus 8. Squaring the radical removes it, and so we're going to get an x minus 12 plus 8, which is x minus 4. Now, our domain, this is uh, where you have to be careful. At first glance, it would say, oh, there's no problems there at all. The domain will be all real numbers. But remember, it has to go into the function g first. And g has a restricted domain because of that radical. We know that x has to be greater than or equal to 12. And that's going to be then our domain for f of g of x. Now, g of f of x, we're going to take g of, and then we're going to plug in the x squared plus 8 into our g function. So that is going to be the square root of x squared plus 8 minus 12, which will become the square root of x squared minus, whoops, minus 4. Now here we can see that the domain is we have to have x squared minus 4 greater than or equal to 0, Maybe you remember we have to factor this as the difference of two squares. We're going to look at a number line and see that our x plus 2, x minus 2 is equal to 0 at negative 2 and 2. That's going to divide our number line into three regions. If we plug in something like negative 3, we're going to get a negative times a negative is positive. That's going to be in our domain. And Something like 0 is in between negative 2 and 2, which will be a negative times a positive makes a negative, will not be in the domain. And something like 3 will make both of those positive. And so our domain, I guess I was working on D over here, our domain is going to be that x has to be less than or equal to negative 2 or greater than or equal to positive 2. So there is our domain. And this was our f of g of x, or g of f of x. Okay? So let's see if we can find f inverse of x. So remember, we're going to think of this first in y notation as uh, 5 minus 4x squared. We will switch the x and the y's. We're going to solve for y. And that's a cube, not a square. 
so then we'll divide by a negative 4, and you're welcome to leave it like this, or you can try to make it look nicer if that's what you would like to. So at a minimum, we should say that we're going to get the cube root of x minus 4, x minus 5 over negative 4. That would be perfectly okay. Alternatively, we could say that our f inverse of x, and if we want, we can bring that negative up there, multiply top and bottom by negative 1, if we would like to make it look more aesthetically pleasing, we can write it that way. Or, and this has got really no particular advantage, but it would also be correct to write that as the cube root of 5 fourths minus 1 fourth x. So any of those will work for us. Okay. Next, we want to verify that f and g are inverses. That means we must show that it satisfies the definition of an inverse, which means that f of g of x must cancel out and give us just x, as well as g of f of x. So first, let's look at f of g of x, which means we're going to put all of this function g into our function f in place of x. So that's going to be 2 times, here's our cube root of x minus 5 over 2 cubed plus 5. Then we're just going to work it out. The cubing and the cube root will undo each other, leaving us with 2 times x minus 5 over 2 plus 5. Then the, whoops, didn't mean to wipe it all the way off. Then our 2's will cancel, leaving us with x minus 5 plus 5. And finally, the 5's kill each other off, and we got what we wanted. Now we have to do it all over again for g of f of x, which means we're going to write g of 2x cubed plus 5. So that means in our g function, we're going to take the cube root of, and the 2x cubed plus 5 is going to go in where the x was. We can let the 5s kill each other. Keep bumping this with my left hand, and now I lost my pen. So we've got now the cube root of 2x cubed over 2. We can let the 2s kill each other off. And finally, we'll get the cube root of x cubed is also x. And we have done what we wanted to. We verified that f and g are inverses of each other. Now we're going to actually find an inverse. This is one of these tough ones because it's got a restricted domain. And I'm going to recommend that we graph this uh, even if uh, it doesn't ask us to. So I'm going to look here on our xy axis. Now we know that 5 minus x squared, we can think of it as negative x squared plus 5. So our x squared graph is going to look like a parabola that opens up. The negative x squared is going to reflect it in the x, and the plus 5 is going to move it up 5. So here at 0, 5, now, because of this x less than or equal to 0, instead of getting that whole parabola, we're only going to get that part of it where the x's are less than or equal to 0. So it's that half of a parabola. So let's see if we can sort our way through this. We're going to switch the x and y's. We're going to try to solve for y. So multiplying through by the negative 1, it's going to make that a negative x plus 5. I'm going to write it as 5 minus x, just because I think it looks nicer. You don't have to. Then we're going to take the square root of both sides. And remember that we want, uh, it could be either positive or negative. And now is where we got to think about this. So we're wondering, are the y values going to be positive or negative in the inverse? So that means we want to look at the x values for the original function, and the x values were negative, right? We used only that part of the curve where x is less than or equal to 0, 
So we are going to choose that negative value. And so this is going to be our f inverse of x. Now, we're going to try to graph this too. I'm going to graph it in, say, blue, just so we can see it different. Now, to graph this, I'm going to factor that negative out, and that will become an x minus 5. So I think it's easier to see this way that our basic square root of x function is going to be reflected in the x-axis because of that negative here, and then reflected in the y-axis because of that negative, and then moved 5 to the right. Alternatively, we could try to get a visual cue and know that if we reflect that yellow curve in the red y equals x line, it's going to look something like that. So this is our inverse, and the original yellow one was our function. Okay, And we should also put our restriction on the variable since that 5 minus x must be greater than or equal to 0, that means that x must be less than or equal to 5. So we need that in there as well as part of our inverse function. All right, let's try another challenging one. So uh, we're going to graph this thing to get some clues along the way. So our green function here, I'm going to think of that as a negative x minus 3. So we know that the square root of x function is going to look like this. The first negative is going to reflect it in the x. The negative on the inside will reflect it in the y. And then we're going to go 3 to the right. So we're going to get 1, 2, 3. This is our original function, which we're calling g of x. So, uh, and you can see that the domain, we just have x less than or equal to 3. That's consistent. So we're going to um, think of that as y equals negative square root of 3 minus x. Then we're going to change our notation. I'm going to change colors too. So I'm going to use a blue here and say x equals negative square root of 3 minus x. We're going to solve this for, oops, that's a y. We're going to solve that for y, so that's going to be x squared. Notice that negative is going to get squared out, and we'll just get 3 minus y. So that's going to be x squared minus 3 is negative y, so y is going to be a 3 minus x squared. Now, we know we can't really get that entire uh, parabola because we only had a half parabola to start with. Now we know this is going to be, if you want to think of it as negative x squared plus 3, it's going to be a parabola that opens down and has vertex at 0, 3. But we can't keep the whole thing. We have to decide which side to keep, which half to keep. So you can do it visually. If you can see that, we can do that. We can also look for clues uh, algebraically. So we're wondering about what is our domain going to be? What x values are we going to use? So if we look at the original, its y values were all negative. You can see that in the curve. All of the y values here are below the x-axis, which are negative. That is, our range here was less than or equal to 0. So when we switch the x and y's, that's another way of telling that we want only the part where the x values are negative. So we're going to get only this piece. So there we see it visually, and algebraically, we're going to say that g inverse of x is going to be our 3 minus x squared, with the restricted domain, x must be less than or equal to 0. Okay, those are pretty tough. I think that's all we got here. Very good.